DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy to manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. All right. Well, on that note, hi, everybody, and uh, thank you very much for taking some time. Monday evening, I can't believe it, it's here already. It is. Like, it, it goes fast. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just me. My weeks lately just seems like they're they're running all together, and it's, it's Monday night again. But I'm glad because I get to hang out with you guys. Um, and if you're noticing, it's John, myself, and, and we had a, a lovely lady that was with us last week. Um that that's not with no she's not there no she's not but she will be right down she will be there right, right there yes there in yeah. just a bit so she's Shaney's going to be coming to join us a little bit later she actually had what had an event tonight which uh go her and uh so she's like i, I can't be there right at the time okay all right well we love her so we're she's going to join us in a little bit uh, but in the meantime tonight we are going to talk everybody's favorite topic gear gonna dig into Really, really to get some theories on or thoughts on gear to start out with, because there's a lot of you now that are watching the shows that are just kind of wanting to get into it and be ready to go for 2021. There's some of us who've been in this for quite a while. We've got our gear. We're happy with that. That's This isn't tonight's discussion. While you may be able to contribute to help someone else, you're probably not going to be learning about you know the newest you know, entry level type gear that's we're going to talk a little bit about those types of things tonight and some thoughts behind that is because today uh reggie um uh, which a lot of you know reggie he's uh he, he follows the shows and such reggie sent me a picture today from um a, a store like home depot but it's not it wasn't home depot this particular picture uh, was of a dj speaker a fisher brand dj speaker he said it was 1800 watts Take a guess at what they had for a price tag on that speaker. One ninety nine. Thirty five dollars. You're right. <laughs> wow. Eighteen hundred watts, and it could have been a twelve inch, and it was the LED type where it had it glow, the cone glowed. But okay. there's there's just the, in, in what it showed is that there's just such a range of pricing when it comes to speakers that can be construed as DJ speakers. Lights are the same way. We can go to Amazon. We can find lights from ten dollars for an LED fixture that'll that'll change colors, all the way up to you know production things. You know, it's there's just such a wide a wide. It wasn't Walmart actually. Uh, it was a it was a home, um, a very similar to Home Depot. It's more of a regional, a regional store up here. So I don't think most of you have it, but if you are from Minnesota, Wisconsin, you know what Menards is, and you would. That's where that's where it was at. So. Yeah, it's just just a an interesting time with things like that out there. Usually, we've been talking kind of off and on about about Sam's Club. Sam's Club carries the Ion stuff, and recently they've been carrying Ion fifteen inch two way cabinets. Two years ago, they had a brand or a version of it, and it sounded terrible. The one I heard the other day that they had playing, it actually sounded pretty decent. It probably wouldn't 
you know, have the same capacity by any means of what I've got in there, but they've come a long way. And I don't know if the pricing has gone up, down or sideways, but. Well, I wouldn't be surprised also if, you know, this is one of the things that I've often found is when you, when you put a piece of sound gear in a store that has no idea what they're doing with it. Um, <laughs> yes, you know, r- r- really? I mean, now like when Walmart used to have like an electronic section, sometimes you'd have people that would like focus just on that. But, but anytime I've walked into Sam's club, it, it's just kind of like today you're in meats and tomorrow you're in electronics. And the next day you're over in paper, like, and, and maybe next day you're doing cashier. Like that's the way it ends up going and nothing against them, but they're not known for being specific and specialized in, in that way. So, what often happens is the gear isn't anywhere set up the way it should. Mm-hmm. So it does sound like absolute garbage because nobody took the time to fine tune it the way they might. So the person walking by goes, oh, that sounds awesome. I'm going to get that. And and maybe you had somebody else who did a little bit better or the comp- manufacturer said, hey, by the way, if you're going to use this on display, these are what the buttons you need to push first. And I think that'd be hugely helpful because a couple of years ago when I looked at the very first Ion one that I saw, I went to the back and they were... I, they might have had a streaming radio or something. I don't remember what exactly they were they were putting through it. But every gain, every little knob was turned all the way. So if it, I think two of them were EQ, like a high and a low, all the way. And and then the, um, the, the gain was all the way. And so there was a hiss in it. Yet it wasn't all that loud. Yeah, you could hear it, you know, probably 50 feet away in a semi-busy store. But... It was like, yeah, it didn't sound good and it didn't have much volume. But I think if I remember correctly, it was like $89 or something like that. It was under $100 for the cabinet. So you get what you get. Well, and I think I think that's one of the things that, you know, you talked about so far is the fact that there's such a wide gamut. It can be extremely overwhelming to somebody who's just getting into this. You know, you know well, you know, and especially if they don't have stores near them or, or as many near them um, to be able to go, you know, what, why why would I spend this when I can get this, which sa- seems like it's the same thing mm-hmm. it's for a DJ speaker, you know, yeah. $1,000 cheaper? Um, it, and, and just kind of seeing that difference really would make a huge, huge piece. Yeah. But yeah, there's just... Shaney. Hi. Yes. You made it. Yay. <laughs> Sorry about coming late. Things oh. got a little crazy here in Chicago. So. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's excellent. Glad you could make it. Um, so, Shaney, what we just were starting out with is Reggie shared a picture um, of a, uh, a a speaker, a kind of a DJ speaker, a DJ looking speaker uh, that he saw at Menards. Uh, for it's a eighteen hundred watt cabinet for okay for thirty five bucks, and uh, we were just kind of talking a little bit about you know there's the gamut of well here. you do save big money at Menards you do you do save money and if you have the eleven percent <laughs> off thing going on right oh yeah. By two. I'm saying you save big money at Menards. I By mean, that is, their, that is their slogan. I was going to say, do I have my, my Menards uh, affiliate link somewhere? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have one. So, so there's a variety of, uh, for those of you who are just getting started, there's a variety of, of different amounts of money you can spend to buy the different parts of, of gear. And Shady, one of the areas I really wanted you to kind of uh, chime in, we'll come back to speakers a little bit, is controllers are like that. And you've gotten to spend some time when you've been with uh, with uh, Denon and and at the Newmark and you you been at the shows. We can spend seven fifty, sixty, seventy dollars on a controller, and we can spend fifteen to hundred to two thousand. Can it for people? And who, we can spend two hundred, three hundred too. Exactly. Like, there's just a, yeah. a gamut or, or a, a kind of a flow. Um, when you have looked at these things, what mm-hmm. kind of kind of uh, spots where when you've touched these played with these a little bit a sweet spot for someone who's kind of getting into this and expecting to kind of budget for a controller my whole thing with controllers is what you really need with them um you know are you are you plugging are you not using a separate mixer and you're going to need to plug everything into your controller so if you're going to do that, you're going to need more than a two-channel controller. If you have a separate mixer, then you really can look at those smaller two-channel controllers. So I like to always tell people, what are you using it for? What are you doing with it? Do you really need all the bells and whistles to start? Let's get you going with what you really need for the controller and go off of that because you don't really have to spend $1,000, $1,500 for, for those controllers, even though you're like, well, that's the one I want. Yeah, but if you want to budget it out to get 
a whole sound system to start with, you might have to start with the smaller controllers, which nowadays, even the smaller controllers are so nice compared to the way they used to be. Some of those two channel and even four channel controllers have like everything on it that you need. So my whole thing is do your research, compare to, you know, what does this have? And you can look online everywhere and it has all the specs of the controllers and everything on there. So you can say, okay, it has this for me. It has that for me. I want this. It has pictures of the front, the back. We didn't used to have all that stuff. Yeah. Like we didn't, we didn't know like what the whole back of it looked like to say, okay, these are the inputs, this and that. Nowadays you have all of that. So my whole thing is look at exactly what you think you need for the controller. Um, most beginning DJs, I say you don't really need that four channel controller if you don't really plan on using it to that capacity, unless again, you're plugging other things into it and, and you need to do other stuff. But even if you're having, you know, a mic and things like that, you could just go pretty simple and just do a two channel controller. And there's some really nice ones out there from some of the companies that are under $500. Yeah, and you mentioned the, the capacity to go from two to four. I've got four, the big fork channel controllers, you know, yeah. the thousand dollar plus versions. I was just trying to think of the last time. Granted, I haven't been DJing a lot, but even probably the last ten shows, it's been a long time since I've actually used channel a third channel. It's been with me. With me, I use a lot of the other channels when I have outside videographers that are coming in and they're, they're showing like a montage for something okay. and they'll just kind of plug in my audio if I don't have a separate mixer with me or, you know, I'll kind of plug something else into it myself and things like that. So exactly what you're saying, if you're not really using those four channels, you don't need to get that type of controller right away. I think it's important to have, like I have, I have a four channel and, and I'm kind of with you, John, I, I only really tend to use two you know, one yeah. and two, I'm not, I'm not getting the fancy four deck mixing or anything like that. And so as a result, two is really all I need. I will use a third one, but as long as I had a controller that had an auxiliary in mm -hmm. of some sort, whether, you know, where it was almost like a standalone control, like when, and back in the day, it felt like, like when I had a 19 inch mixer, um, that my CD players were plugging into and everything else. I always had an auxiliary jack yep. type of piece, and, and that would be the that would be the piece. So as long as I had something for that to run on, whether it was on a channel or whether it was just a separate knob somewhere, um, that worked. That would work for me. And and I think for a lot of you, that's really going to, going to be the place to begin. One, you're going to save. I mean, look at look at the look at the controllers that are four channel versus two channel, where everything else for the most part is the same. You're instantly taking off usually. A couple hundred bucks, right? Oh there. yeah, you could get a nice two two channel controller for like two fifty. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice that even has bells and whistles, like th that has like all of that. So you definitely can get a, a really good one and and lightweight and everything portable. Just I mean, all the things that you want to think about of what you want to to have all your gear, you could definitely find that in in those controllers. And I think one of the things that, uh, and, and in the chat room, uh, Brian has mentioned he's got the CDJ 2000, the indie, these bigger, the big, bigger mixers and such. If you're just starting out, that has, and Jim Strong just in the last show uh, talked about that the guests, you know, that the gear is, is cool, but it's cooler for us. The guests, in, in many ways, really don't care that they would rather, um, at, most weddings type events, there's certainly some events where gear is important, but thereafter they want to hear their, the music they want to hear. They want to hear it in the way they want to hear it, and and they want it to sound good. So I like the four channel controllers um, that that have the two USBs because I do DJ with some like other people. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, like tonight, I actually walked into my event with just my backpack, and the DJ was already going, and I literally just opened up my laptop plugged my USB, you know, waited till it was my turn, saw, saw which one he was on, went to the other channel, switched it over, and just started DJing. So that, but then again, that's not for a beginner. Right, exactly. That definitely is not, you know, a controller for a beginner, but that's, you know, why I personally, like, someone's like, why do you always use four channels? Why do you always do this? And I'm like, because sometimes I do DJ with other DJs when I bring my gear or they bring their gear, and it's just so seamless to just jump on that instead of having to lug another controller, set it up, plug it in here, 
yeah, like, you know, like I'm, as people know, I'm very versatile. I can DJ on whatever equipment is there, even if I've never touched it before. But like, that's another good reason for four channels, but not for beginners. Beginners mm-hmm. are like, well, I want that four channel. Well, you don't need that four channels. Well, I think a lot of the beginners are not going to run into a situation where um, they're probably going to have that separate mixer. Right. Right. So, so one of the things when we're talking about sound, you know, we do want to, you do want to make sure things are sounding good. And the one area that I would say a lot of your um, cheaper, and I'm not going to say less expensive, I'm going to say cheaper um, controllers gets into is mic inputs. That seems to be where some of them always seem to run into it. So, you know, it's one of the things where you, a lot of times when you go and you play, if you if you go to a store and you play or whatever with the controller, they go, oh, I want to I want to hear it. I want to hear it sounds like. And you'll be playing music through it, and you're like, oh, that sounds great. And then I've heard of people who are buying these controllers, and they go home and they they're getting ready for an event. They plug their microphone, this microphone that they bought in, that's you know, average, you know, not not high quality, but average. And they go, man, that sounds like crap. Yeah, that, that's the thing that you want to make sure you're watching out for too. Take the time to plug a microphone into it and, and give a listen to that as well as the music going through it. Agreed. So, of course, you mentioned that, uh, Shaney, that there's a variety of different uh, levels, um, price and such. One of the things I found interesting in having some conversations with both the Pioneer and um, and the Denon is that they're best-selling controllers for 2020, and they have done sales, are... Uh, Newmarks was the party to go, and I think it's uh, Pioneers. Is that was it? We DJ? No, that's that. We DJ is um, Newmark. That what was the what's the um, the li- oh you talking about that little one the, uh, the little Pioneer one? Yeah, it was it was a it's oh a, yeah the We D yeah yeah hold on I'm it's, gonna, it's yes a, I know which Best one you're talking Buy about. sells it, and Best Buy has sold more of those, and you can shake a stick at. Yeah, the WeGo or WeGo or we, something like that, but it's a little tiny. I think they're yeah. WeGo four maybe. WeGo four, WeGo four. Go. That we go, one. Yep, that would be it. There. Yeah. There. Those are those are the the best selling, and a lot of it is yeah. because you've got people who are getting into it, and those can do a lot. I mean, you look at the price of those; they're generally about a hundred dollars, give or take. And if you have to, you can you can buy a separate uh, mixer to give you some of those microphone inputs and things that you need. So there's ways to definitely get into it and not break the bank like my 8000 the controller back there i think it was i think 1295 is something somewhere in that ballpark the 7000 that i use all the time i paid the last one i bought i bought a b stock and i think it was like 600 is what i paid for it so don't get excited it's gone yeah well no mine isn't mine is my b stock is <laughs> actually right up there <laughs> no it it will be gone by the weekend john i'm just saying yeah you know but but i, I they're, they're, the big the big ones are out there and such and they're cool but for starting you don't need to don't need to jump in there so let's kind of graduate or slide over back to speakers we talked about that there were some less expensive ones if you're just starting out and I think day mentions in the mention in the chat room that spending more starting out on speakers than probably investing putting that money into a controller I think proportionally wise I think makes a lot of sense that was good good advice how would a person attack sound specifically speakers when you're first starting out and i i want to get both your opinions from both of you so dan kind of how would you recommend doing it find the one that gives you the most watts nice no, I, had to say that for, I had to say that for howie um no for, for, basically it comes from it comes from sounding and, and hearing them uh, i think that's one of the biggest obstacles that so many people run into is you know just this idea of um finding a speaker and, and listening to it. I think it's better to better to, I mean sorry to, to finding a speaker and not listening to it mm-hmm. to make people get caught on, up on this idea or um, you hear you know you'll see in the chat rooms oh what speaker should I buy and and I mean the list gets ended up to be in 30 40 50 different speakers and, and you know and and some are way out of price range for a lot of people especially people who are just starting out and, and so I, I think it's important to kind of go in, go in with the idea of, listen, this is the budget that I'm working with. Is it realistic? All right. And if it is, yes, I know I'm going to get better things if I spend more, but is it going to help me to get started? Is this going to be what I need to get started? And, and I think it's important to find a set of full range cabs, um, you know, 12s or 15s to start out with that are going to be versatile enough for you to get through majority of the events that you're going to have when you're starting. But be a re- be realistic 
if you're starting out and you have a pair of 12s or 15s, you're not going to go and do a 250, 300 person wedding, assuming that it can happen, or two or 350, you know, students at a school dance. It, right. It's just not the type of thing that you need. So you also have to realize when you're purchasing these, what are they made for? What's the what's the SPL? What's the sound pressure level? What's what kind of sound are you getting out of that 1800 watts? You know, is it going to go more than 50 feet? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so so you're looking for you're looking for quality as best you're going to get right within your budget. And that's going to give you the effect that you're going to have for your for your events. When I got started, I had a pair of passive Yorkville 15s. Um, and, and they were like, they're, they were more entry level. And I beat those things to death for the longest time until I finally was able to go, okay, now it's time to upgrade to, um, I think QSC was my next purchase. Sure. Shaney, what are your thoughts as far as kind of what kind of a minimum a person would need to get started with, with the speaker side of it? Um, my whole thing, again, like how we talked about having a separate mixer, if the beginning DJ is not going to have a separate mixer and you're going to be plugging your, I'm assuming, probably controller and not CDJs in a mixer or anything like that or reins or anything, is, is you know, having like some powered speakers to be able to plug your speakers into your controller and having, you know, clear, precise sound for, for what you want for that. Because again, like we talked about, are they going to ha you know, have a mixer? No. Okay. So we have to make sure that whatever you're buying, you can plug right from speakers into, into your controller. And, you know, nowadays there's so many different, there's so many speakers to look at. Like it's kind of like controllers, like your head, the head's going to explode, but there's so many different things that you personally, everyone's going to, it's like, it's kind of like controllers too. Everybody has their a different taste. Mm -hmm. And I know people are like, well, you got to get these, these are junk. These are this, these are that. But then are they going to tell you why they think they're junk? I mean, it's kind of like how somebody says, well, go for this and not for that, but they're not telling you why not to go for that. Right. So you definitely have to weigh those pros with the cons of what you need. Um, are you a person that maybe has back problems that maybe needs some smaller stuff because you don't have techs and you don't have people helping you out? So maybe you have to go more towards something that's a lighter speaker for you. Do you need, okay, here's my thing and I'm sure people are gonna argue with me and that's okay and I don't care. But if you're just starting out, do you need a sub right now just to start out to have to have at your dispense? Yep. Let me tell you, if you're doing smaller events, no, you don't need a sub for your smaller events if that's what you're starting out doing. I'm not talking about you're doing these weddings for hundreds of people and things like that. Like Dan said, if you want to just get some 12s or some 15s, you can totally do parties like that. I still do parties with just tops and I don't bring subs for certain events. And mm -hmm. it's okay. Like, like the DJ police isn't going to come and put a big X with a circle in your face on it because you don't have subs at a party. Some people might do it and then that's their opinion, but you don't need to then also fork out money right now for to have one of those subs that could be on your list of my wish list for when I'm, you know, get the money in and I break even and now I'm making money, but you could get some incredible 12 or 15 inch speakers from some top companies, powered speakers that are going to be perfect for you. So just my thing is look into that and look into how versatile you need that those, you know, do you need it more lightweight? Do you need this? Do you need that? Because of, you know, things that are going on with you, but you definitely can get some great speakers like that. And then you can add that sub later. Yeah. I think that the sub area, I think is a great, great advice with that. And I think that's one of the mistakes that young, younger or beginning DJs make is that they go jump out and it's like, I need tops. I need you know, the two tops. I need two subs and, and off we go. And if you've got the money, yay. But Oh yeah. If you I'm don't. not saying don't, I'm just like, everyone's like, well, Shady say no subs. No, I never said that, but you don't, for just starting out, if we're trying to budget it out for you guys, you, it's not going to make or break what you're going to do right now. Yeah. Well, and I, I think you also, I mean, it, look at majority of what people are starting to really get into. Like the, the hot set of speakers for the past three or four years have been line arrays and, and a lot of your line array, um, or, or column arrays, I should say, technically, um, like the EVs, the the J Evox, uh, the whole the whole sets like that. They don't have you know eighteen inch subs built into them. Uh, you know, I have the Evolve fifties. It's a twelve inch sub in the bottom. So 
what do you think a 12 inch cab has? You know, I mean, that that's the thing. Like, so, so you want to keep that piece in mind. Uh, but I, I wanted to come back to something David said in the chat room, which I think is golden right here when, when you're talking about it. Um, think about building in your backup plan. Decent power speakers with an input jack for your phone or iPad gives you a backup plan if your laptop or controller dies. Um, in, in other words, you know, you're not going to get this on all of them, but if you have at least a set of RCA inputs that are um, available or the ability to go into that speaker, um, it just gives you an extra layer of protection um, should something go down, at least by time while you get your real backup is, or even if it's just a power blip on your controller and you have to somehow, you know, troubleshoot, you got use it going. You've got something going in that in that speaker. Agreed. So, and like you said, there's just so many, so many of those that, you know, EV came out with them. RCF has on JB. Like so many of those type of speakers now are going out that you have your choice of what is good for you if you just don't want to get like a little 12, not little, but 12 inch or 15 inch speakers and you want to go that way of getting those type of speakers. Just be aware that if you do go for that, those are, I mean, those are, are in what I would say very rarely um, entry level just because of the cost. Mm -hmm. But, yes. you know, but, you know, if you compare what it has in it, you could find a cab that, you know, a cabinet that's, you know, going to fit, not the quality, but the, the, the value that you need. And we're, and we're, Moving beyond the the Menard speakers and the Costco speakers, you go to you go to Amazon right now and you search for DJ speakers. You're gonna find uh, a Behringer, a Rockville, um, Harbinger, and then any number of knockoff uh, brands that are basically looking like the exact same cabinet with just a little bit of different nameplate of of you know whatever the name is. Half the time, they don't even put a name on there. You know, Alpha Sonic. What? Uh, uh, you know. There, there's a lot of speakers out there, and this is where you get to the point of. I've been put in the the chat. You know, what would you recommend for someone starting out for five hundred dollars? Obviously, five hundred dollars with some of these off brands are going to get you two speakers and and may get you all the cables and everything for a lot less than that. It gets to the point of weighing out: Am I doing one? You know, am I doing one show now and again? If I'm doing, you know, if I one show a month, if I just want to go and DJ for a friend's party and I may never do it again, that's that's going to be, give you one requirement. But if you're going to be like, okay, so I want to do this and I want to build this up to become something. Uh, and I wanted to throw this out there. And we talked about backup or having a plan, but I almost feel at times it would make more sense to take that $500 and go buy the best, especially if I'm doing smaller parties, the best individual speaker that I could afford. One speaker. Spend $500 buying the... the uh, uh, the ELX 200 as an example, the 12 inch of that, because I can do a lot with that 12 inch. And then after I've made a little money, buy a second one. Then if, as I've made more money, then I buy the subwoofer to go with it and build that way, as opposed to going and buying two, you know, 12 inch Rockville speakers that are not designed to do a, a night in, night out, or on a regular basis type, type, um, uh, show uh, flow. What are your thoughts on on if a person would do something like that? I mean, I'm not mad at it. I mean, if you're doing if you're doing smaller events, one of those powerful speakers from one of those top brand companies can blow out any of the other speakers in a heartbeat and sound crystal clear and give you exactly what you want. So I'm definitely not mad at that. I just, I'm the type of person where, okay, yeah, so do I put it on my left side? Do I put it on my right side? Which way am I going to angle it? Do I put it behind me? Do I put it up above behind me? So it's just, you know, like, that'd be like my whole, like, thinking of what I'm going to do. Do I put it on the table then? You know, like, also make it a monitor and make it a speaker. But I'm definitely not mad at that type of situation because that is an incredible situation to be like, let me buy one top notch. 12 inch 15 inch speaker and be able to do a 50 person party with it because you can totally do a 50 person party with a speaker like that and oh, yeah. then some and then yeah but if you have my whole thing is if you have the events booked 
Yeah, do it because then if you start to have that money coming in, you'll be able to get that that money to get that second one right away. So I'm definitely not mad at that situation. It's not my ideal thing to do because I would rather have like the two speakers and, and also figure out, okay, am I going to go on the lower end of the brand or am I going to maybe get some tens on the higher end or do something? Mm -hmm. But that is a good, I wouldn't mind doing something like that if I was just starting out to have a top top notch speaker. See, I, and I have a problem on it. I, I have a huge issue with it. Just, just from the standpoint of, of a look, of a feel, of a thought, you know, when, when somebody walks into the room and, and they see what you're doing and they see one speaker, like I just, I, they don't know brands. Like, like the average person that walks into a wedding doesn't know brands. They know look. Mm -hmm. I, get, I get compliments on two things throughout my system. I get compliments on the look. I love when a venue owner who's never seen this speaker walks by and goes, Oh, I was expecting something big. Like I was like, like there's this one venue, they insist on you using their speaker and, and, and Shady's got it right behind her. And, and I said, and when I walked in to meet with them, I was like, you know, that's fine. That's yours. I don't know that system. So if something happens, are you going to be here to, to help you <laughs> troubleshoot it? Are you yeah. going to troubleshoot go, it? If like yeah. Like, like I, I can if fix everything Something happens mine. to that base module because if that base module goes out, you can't use the tower. It's right. Yeah. So and you so, don't know that. Like, you no, don't. <laughs> I have no clue. I've never touched the thing other than the, well, I take it, I've touched it, but that's about it. And, and he was like, no. And I was like, okay, do you mind if I bring mine in? And he was like, he's like, no. I, I said, trust me. I, I promise you it'll, it'll look good. I, I promise you everything will be fine. He said, okay, no problem. I'm, I'm going to trust you here. And, and when he walked by, like, because he, he was there for part of it, he just didn't stay the night. He looks and he goes, oh, oh, I was not expecting that. Mm -hmm. And I said, wait till you hear him. And so, so that was, that just kind of leads into that. What I would rather see somebody who's starting out do, if you don't have the money to buy two quality budget speakers, okay, I would rather you go to your local store and rent a set and rent a set for a couple for a couple events stockpiling that money then buy the quality budget and then you know when you can step up more step up more and that quality budget becomes your backup that's what that's what i did like like when i actually I take it back i shouldn't say that because mine wasn't quality budget mine was just budget but <laughs> When I, when I bought it, it was my, like, I bought them as a backup mm -hmm. and, and that was, it was like some stupid deal. They were like $250 a piece and I just used them for backup. They went out, I think maybe five times total. Like I, I used it. That was it. Um, and then I started building a ceremony system and they went bye-bye, but you know, looking, looking for something like that, I think you're going to be better off from an appearance standpoint, just to have, just to have that, that double set again can you rock a 50 person event with one yeah we know that but the the look the appearance the thought the process that goes into that i think would be better for you just to rent because mm -hmm. I, I would still be going which side am i putting it on am i putting it above my head am i putting it to my left am i putting well, it to my right or, and, and am that, i gonna hold it like what am i gonna do well and that comes that brings up a good point because a lot of <laughs> a lot of your a lot of your 12 inch cabinets or your 15 inch cabinets they don't have the you know 180 dispersion so where are you going to be in the room now? Like now, if you're kind of in a, in just not the perfect setup, putting one speaker lot, some people somewhere in that room, people are not going to be able to hear or understand clear, not because of the speaker, but because of the dispersion and, and where they are relative to you. So I think that's why I said, I think that too, just gives you that flexibility. You know, I'd rather have two that I can turn way down than to have one that has to be cranked and, and somebody can't hear it. Mm -hmm. Scenario number three on the speakers. What'd you say? What, I said, not now, scenario, scenario number three scenario. of what to do with the speakers now is if you're just starting in the game and you have some incredible mentors that have been kind of like pushing you to do this and you've been talking to about equipment, see if they have any speakers that they want to sell you. Because probably a lot of people who've been in the game probably have lots of gear that's sitting in there that they wouldn't mind getting rid of. Plus, you know who the person is. So are they really going to give you like a bad pair of speakers if you're personal, like good friends with them or this and that? I know I've sold my backup speakers yeah. to starting out DJs and 
they were like so ecstatic and they're like, these are in great condition and these are this. And then, you know, and I'm like, you're getting them from a friend. Like you're not getting them from, but you still can go on like the marketplaces and the Craigslist and stuff like that. But I would then put my feelers out to the DJ community that, you know, and say, Hey, and I bet you, you're going to get some great deals on some incredible speakers. So if you don't want to get, you know, whatever's within your budget and you don't want to do the one speaker route, you can always do that route as well. And I think that's a, a, a great idea. It's similar to buying a used car. It's always kind of cool to buy a used car from someone that, A, you know, may trust, but they know they've ha- they were the first owner of the car. They know the history of the car. And you have an idea, okay, are they gonna, have they kept it up? Have they da 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 Buying the speakers are kind of like that because if it's been bounced from three to four different people, you don't know if somebody along the line beat the snot out of it. But if you know who it is, buying used gear is, is uh, can be uh, very helps to stretch your dollars and it can uh, the gear can work for a long time i mean i've sold some things that i had used i had purchased i used it like twice and it just didn't uh i just never needed it again and it sat there for about six months and it's like you know i'm just gonna get rid of it and let it find a home where someone can use it so and you got cash in your pocket exactly Except I'm, I'm horrible at this. When it comes to selling in a marketplace, I'm one of those people that's like, okay, so here's here's the price. And they're like, oh, really? And it's like, okay, so I'm sorry. I'll take 50 bucks off. And they're like, huh, what? And it's like, I'm so, okay, I'll knock another 25 bucks off. And before long, I'm paying them to take it. <laughs> no. True story. No. No. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta stock John's post more often. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk, um, when you're getting started, about the importance or lack thereof of lighting. And then we can we can talk more specifics of, of certain things. But how important is lighting for when you're when you're just getting it, you're doing these small parties here and there to get your kind of name out there, you're getting your feet wet, what have you? I think it's important. I, I, I it's one of those things where uh, it, it almost gets asked like when, when I'm talking with somebody who doesn't really know me, who doesn't really know what I do and, and they get a price for me, does, does that include, does that include like lighting? Like, and I'm like, you mean for like the dance floor? Yeah. Does it include lighting for uplighting? No. And, and, and so, you know, it's one of those things where they get this idea almost like when they hear it, like that's a given, like we have to have lighting, even though, you know, you talk to a lot of the, you talk to a lot of DJs out there and, um, you know, especially the higher end guys are going out and it's like, this is our base price and we don't have any lighting. This is just us and speakers. And that's what we do. I agree. I think when you're starting out, you're in a different type of clientele who are expecting some sort of lighting, some sort of, of peace to the floor. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different lighting that's out there. A lot of different options. Uh, I'm a fan of just wash colors. I'm not a fan of the dots. I'm not a fan of lasers and, and, and that kind of thing. And there's a lot of them that give you flexibility with the sound active type of pieces, but also control for colors. Um, everything from like a wash FX, uh, it's the new one that just came out, the hex. You're grand, you're going to pay a couple hundred bucks, but it does a lot. And just that one, that one light. Um, Chavez four bar series. That's what I still use like every wedding that's that's my main lighting is is a four bar wash and, and so i recommend things like that because they're very versatile um you wouldn't necessarily have you know there's a lot of different even within those systems there's different tiers so you wouldn't have to go for like the real high tier just get a good color good wash colors um and and it gives you the flexibility to then add to it with some effects lighting later on mm-hmm. because washes are going to be your base for a lot of the things that you do when you get to when you get to a higher lighting type of things yeah agreed i i think you know just like dan said for the basics i think you need you definitely need lighting you definitely can start out small you don't need to go crazy with lighting at first because like we said you're doing these smaller events you're not 
doing these crazy events we're trying to fit it within your budget of like the smaller speakers the smaller controller everything so i think just the basic type of lightings but do your homework on it like dan said like the washes you know don't do those those dots and everything that that we just said those are like those are like the 1970s type type of look and stuff like that and you know photographers really love you if you get those anyways like <laughs> she's kidding she's kidding <laughs> well I, yeah i meant that very sarcastically i yes. meant that like really so yeah for those that don't know me my humor but yeah definitely just you know get some some washes and you don't have to you know go crazy if you don't want to if you don't want to do the whole programming thing yet because you, you're just your head you can't wrap around it and you don't want to do it you don't have to you don't have to do it with any of this stuff yet you can just go very basic and concentrate because you're just starting out concentrating on the dj and concentrating on the parties mm -hmm. just have them plugged in you know have them like if you need to turn them off do it ghetto style and just you know um oh you need the you need the, the my lights off for for a group picture okay <laughs> You know, just like, <laughs> look, like it's okay. You're just starting out. Like you don't, you know. All right, well, we're partying back on. Turn the music on. Walk over. Plug the one in. Walk over. Plug the other one in. Get back to DJ. And you know, like you don't have to be like, oh, well, now I need to learn how to program. And now I need like one of those. You know, I, do I need to do DMX? Do I need to do you know? Do I need to do a program on my computer? Do I need this? You don't need to do that. Baby steps. Baby steps. Baby steps. Like let's get you going. And let's get you events. And then how we're progressing with everything else you'll progress with different lights and you'll progress with a program and you'll do this and you do that so definitely i suggest exactly like you know what dan said get some washes and like let's just start out simple but clean and pretty mm -hmm. i think that's that's something else to kind of add you know you can make yourself appear to be much higher on the professional scale Mm -hmm. just by making things clean. Like we haven't even talked about that, but when we're talking about your gear, you know, taking a few minutes to making sure that things look good from, you know, step out to where, to where the guests are going to be and taking a, taking a second to look at that. So, you know, little things like, you know, Velcro wraps for your stands to keep the cords tight, you know, little things, little things like that, that you don't think of, but that make a huge difference just to your appearance. And, and again, this is starting out, but those are things that you can pick up at Walmart. You can pick a roll of Velcro straps up for like five bucks. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it, it's well worth it, you know, because, because here's the other thing you go on your forum and go, this is my first event. What do you guys think of my system? DJs are going to eat you alive for that one. You know, that that's just the way it is. You know, but Jimmy, um, Jimmy likes it when I use orange extension cords and I leave them kind of coiled and piled behind. He loves it. I thought everybody did that. Oh, mine are yellow though. I get like the bright oh, yellow see, ones. I like orange. I like orange. Okay. Especially, you know, this time of the year, orange just makes me feel good. Well, it is Halloween this week. So, yeah. I mean, I it gotta could be, be for seasonal. Halloween. And then I buy the nice green ones so I can use a green one and the red ones from, from like Walmart for Christmas. For Christmas. It's so fabulous. Mm. See, John goes above and beyond, but yeah. you don't really need to color code your extension cords yeah. because that's spending money you don't need to buy... I think I've actually got red ones and blue ones and oh yeah, all sorts of cool colors. <laughs> now you're talking about matching the lighting to the color theme of the wedding because you're that kind of guy. Yeah, yeah, that's an important thing. So so smart guy here did not um, activate the the uh, licensed version of Zoom tonight. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh wow. So are we four, gone in like two minutes? Four minutes. We have four minutes left here. So <laughs> and and I just went and turned it back on because uh, we have a, a variety of licenses with our, our team and I had put them on other people before starting tonight's show. So it's, so uh, we're going to do a wrap up now. <laughs> gonna, yeah. We've got about four minutes to wrap or to uh, kind of wind things down. So, <laughs> so the important thing for to remember from tonight's show is that, uh, is that Shaney's going to be trying to figure out where to put her speaker. Dan is going to be going to be renting gear and he's going to be going from rental shop to rental shop to find that perfect set of speakers and I'm going to be wondering why the video shut off. In my defense, I do have only one speaker up for my live stream. That is true. And I noticed you did. <laughs> I do. I only have the one speaker up. So I only have the one up. Yeah, the OCD didn't. <laughs> so I'm good. I guess it's on that side. Yeah, so yeah, right. There we go. So That's I'm good. No, next. No. Next person. <laughs> oh. Well, I guess on that note, we gotta we gotta wrap it up. John, quickly, what do we got this week? Uh, tomorrow night, Ben Stowe is uh, we're gonna be gonna be kind of looking at speakers. Um, gonna dig 
and dive into some history of speakers and looking at some of the older cabinets and such, getting things set up where we're going to be going in a couple of weeks, looking at why is a $35 speaker a $35 speaker and why is a $300 speaker and why is it, uh, and really digging into that. Ben's going to actually disassemble some things and, and show you that. And then our second show, we're going to talk about, is it time to, after you saw this last week's show where we had the big stack of CDs, is it time to start re-ripping some of those during this, you know, the winter season because you need them? you know, better quality, what have you. And is that, you know, what can you use for that? And Jay and Brian have been working and talking a lot about that. So we're going to dig into that tomorrow night in our second show. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in tonight. Uh, DJNTV.com forward slash chill. Um, John will drop the chat maybe before it yep. closes on us. Um, you can join the chat room. Keep your conversations going. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, before we, we leave, I'm going to cut you off really quick. Before we leave, I am dropping a little secret for you guys because it is 10 o'clock Chicago time, 11 o'clock East Coast, which means it's almost midnight. So I could actually drop a very huge secret. Bose is actually dropping some new speakers tomorrow. Ooh. So I'm letting you guys know the announcement will be tomorrow afternoon. It's less than a minute on here. So I just wanted to let you know any Bose fans out there, we're dropping some cool speakers. That's all I'm saying. All right, Excellent. I'm done. Keep Excellent. talking. Will that be on their Facebook page or have they said It'll where they're going? It'll be all over the place. Yes. Good. Excellent. Well, there we'll go. look forward to that. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Have yourself a wonderful night. We'll see you next time. Okay. Good night, everybody. Uh,